Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I want to teach you how you can do a multiplayer game with some bots and using varcloud. What is varcloud? It's a variable that is in the cloud and that is so synchronized between all the players of your game. So for, for example here I have three players. I have this one that will make a score. I have this one that will make a score over there. And it did a beautiful half a second to click on it. And here it is 0.7 seconds to click on it. And 0.8 seconds to click on it on this one. Beautiful. As you can see, the score is going up and up and up. My God, it's beautiful. So you want to learn how to do that? Okay, let's check the code behind it. It's not really a code because it's no code. Scratch is something that allow you to to do some code without coding and let's see how we can do this kind of game. First of all, you need a bat. And here I did an example that is dirty where all the code is on the same stuff. But here we have a bat and we have a flag who say, hey, when someone starts a game, can you do something? We go in a loop, it's something that is doing something and then going back and doing something and going back and doing something and going back, it's doing all the stuff forever. And here what is happening is that he's saying, hey, can you move the bats here randomly and move it to uh, over there in two seconds? So it will do toot, 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 toot. Okay. Now we need to start the game and to say, hey, can you show the bat? Because show means show uh, the stuff where my code is and the bat is the place where the code is. So show me the bat. Set every variable that need to be set to zero. So the local score is zero. The score of the enemy is zero. The global score that currently is on the server will store it locally. And we say it's the previous score. It will be useful later. We say the score when we start is the one that is when we start. And we say that for the moment we have zero catch. So zero is catch uh, since we started because that is here to score over there. The local time is the time of the game, of locally over there. The time when the bat appear is now, because we just started the game. So, we have a bat, it moves. We have some variables that are set up. The variables are the stuff over there that we can create. And you can see that if you want to create one, you can create it here, and it like this. And tala, I have a beautiful variable that is on the cloud. How you can have those features? Because for you, it will be locked over there. It's by become, uh, becoming a scratcher. A scratcher, basically, it's uh, someone who did some project. So you need to be, do 10 projects. You need to command plenty of guy. You need to follow the project of others. So you need to click here and here. You need to follow some guys. So you go in explore over there. Uh, create idea like this. Uh, about no scratch. You go uh, here and you say, hey, you over there. Your project is beautiful, I want to follow you. And then you go on the project over there and you say, hey, your game is beautiful, I want to, I love it, it's beautiful, it's perfect. It is really perfect, beautiful. You can play it if you want, it's not counting that, but you can play it. You can remix it if you want. I don't know if remix count as uh, something that you did, uh, but the idea is that when you do all that kind of stuff, you will have here a list of shared project and a project that you created. And that's uh, what you want to have. And uh, I don't know if it's 10 shared project or 10 project uh, in private, but you need to have 10 projects to be able to be a scratcher. As soon as you do that, a day later, so not as soon as, a day later, you will receive a small letter over there. It will say, hey, boy, you are now a scratcher, do you want to be one? And then you accept all that and you are now a beautiful scratcher and you have those beautiful variables over there. Go back to the code. <clears throat> now, that you have a, now that you have a scratcher, you have access to those variables that you can create. I will delete it because I don't want to keep it in the project. But we have two of them. We have local one that is on my client and we have the cloud one that is the score over there and the best score uh, the best clicking score over there so let's try to understand how we can use all of that okay <clears throat> 
how to detect that someone did a score. You say when the game starts, I do a loop forever, so I'm checking every time, every time, uh, what's happening. I said the local time of the game is the one here on timer, just to have a local variable that I can use. Now I say, hey, can you compare the cloud that is over there with the last one I store uh, at the start over there? If it's not the same, then we can say that now the previous score is the one that we find on the internet and we say to everybody, hey, someone did a score. Perfect. Really cool. Nice. So like that, it will run all the time. And as soon as the score is marked, yeah, I say I can detect that the score was uh, done. If a score was done, by, because you broadcast a message, broadcast it's a, it means that you send a, a, an event to everybody in the scene over there. We can say, hey, I'm listening to this on click bat. So, what could I do? So, poof, 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 he will say, okay, first of all, now that I know that someone did something, I can say that globally catch since start. So, the when did we, uh, the, the, the score that is here is the score that uh, we remove the one over there and we remove the one since we started and we have the score that were marked since the player is playing and not since the start of the server so that's how we compute it now that we know uh, how many points over there were marked we can say hey can you do the score since the start less the score that the player did and like that, you can compute the score of everybody else. And ta-da, you have the beautiful score of your enemy. Now, we detect that the bat had been clicked by us or by someone else. So I need to hide the bat to say, mm -mm, not possible to see it. And you don't want the bat to reappear to, to, to close of the player or of where it was. So you say now, move the bat randomly in the scene. You wait three seconds and then you show it. That's not synchronized between the other player over there, the time, so it will appear three seconds later, but uh, maybe one, someone will have it a bit closer than everybody. Now that we know that the bat is reappearing, we need to store when it reappeared in local time to be able to compute how many time it uh, took to click on the bat over there. So, now that's done, we are continuing on the loop, tuk, 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 and uh, the player decide to oop, click on the bat. So yes, here, uh -huh. click on the bat, poof. So when you click on the bat, if you have this little guy over there, when this sprite is clicked, it means that when it clicked, we, it does something. Say, hey, if someone click here, I want to say to everybody in the client here, that the player clicked on the bat. Us. Wow. Wow. We clicked on the bat. Yeah. So now that we clicked, we deserve a point. So I increased my own point locally, saying, hey, I win a point. And then I change the global cloud point and I say, hey, we can add a point to the global one. This is not secure because it means that if someone hacks your game or if someone is modifying the game, uh, maybe he can cheat on the point and stuff like that. We do some game by the, with the idea that people are not hacking your game. If you don't want to do that, you need to do something that is called a server. It means a player that will have a different right and he will add the score. Uh, but that's something really complicated, so we will not do that. So we, the player say, hey, I win a point and we can increase the global point of one. Ta-da! So everybody will have this, and so everybody will have this also. A uh, mouse that will, uh, 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 this bat will disappear. I'm not making the bat disappear over there, because the idea is that as soon as I will change that, it will go on the server of Scratch, and it will go down on everybody, and so also on me. So I just change the score, and I wait that the server say, can you hide the bat? And ta-da, basically that's all. And now if you want to show the score, you just say, hey, since the last time I showed the bat over there, 
could you remove now since this time over there? And I have the local time it took me to click. So here, 88 seconds. So here, 0 0.7 seconds. And that's all. Basically, that's how you do multiplayer. Set up the stuff, move the mouse, then you check for the global score to change. You say everybody, hey, the global score to change. You hide the stuff, you actualize the score and the point. You say that now the bats appear. As soon as someone click on it, it say, I'm increasing my own point. I'm increasing the point of everybody. I am showing everybody that I'm the best and ta-da, that is the idea. So hope you enjoy. That was how you can do a Varkload multiplayer game in Scratch. And if you want to learn more on how to do Scratch, I invite you to go on the project that I'm doing, that is uh, Hello RC Kart tutorial. I forgot to save, no. Uh, here, it's something that teaches you how you can play this game with Scratch. And uh, this is the non-Scratch version, and the Scratch version is uh, da -da -da -da, Hello Car RC from Scratch. And this is the version of with Scratch. So yeah, hope you enjoy, have fun. I, 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 I ping me if you need help, ping me if you want people to play with you, uh, ping people if you want them to play with you. I really hope that now you know how to they make a multiplayer game using Scratch and the Varcloud. Have a nice day, may the code be with you. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.